Good afternoon. Um, just to update on the Secretary General's <coughs> uh, travels, he is in Tonga, where this morning he took part in the opening of the 53rd uh, Pacific, Island, Pacific Islands Forum. He praised Pacific Island leaders for their collective commitments to environmental stewardship and regional peace and called the region for a beacon of solidarity and strength. The world has much to learn from the Pacific, he said, but the world must also step up in supporting your initiatives. He underscored that the survival plan for our planet is simple, ending the exploitation of coal, oil, and gas fairly and in a way that protects the most vulnerable. All countries have a part to play, he said. He also urged Pacific Island states to end their own dependence on imported fossil fuels and seize the benefits of the clean energy revolution. Uh, he also had a number of field visits in Tonga, notably uh, officially commissioning a new early warning uh, system uh, for uh, Tonga. And he also met with youth leaders and also visited a seawall and heard from coastal communities impacted by um, the rise in the sea level. Um, yesterday, he also had a series of bilateral meetings with leaders attending the forum. Later today, uh, the Secretary General will take part in the Leaders' Dialogue at 11 a.m. local time. He will also have a press uh, event to launch the World Meteorological Organization's report on the state of climate in the Southwest Pacific. Uh, and that press uh, event should be uh, broadcast live via social media platform and as soon as we know which one we will share that information with you uh, i think you've heard quite a bit uh today on gaza both from a senior u.n official and just now from an UNRWA colleagues uh just a few more updates uh to share with you um obviously uh ocha stresses that the um the repeated evacuation orders uh, that the Israelis have issued have upended a whole life-saving humanitarian hub that was set up in Dar el Bala follow, following the evacuation of the Rafah hub back in May. And it, of course, as you heard, severely impacts our ability to deliver essential support and services. Water production in Dar el Bala was reduced by 85 percent due to loss of access to water sources in areas designated for evacuation back in earlier in August. And on polio, after the first confirmed case, our partners on the ground tell us that at least 50,000 children born since the crisis began are highly unlikely to have received any immunization due to the collapse of the health system in Gaza. Yesterday, our colleagues at UNICEF confirmed that 1.2 million, do million doses of the polio vaccine type 2 have been brought in to Gaza to immunize more than 640,000 children together with uh, WHO and UNRWA. For its part, the World Food Program says their operations are severely hampered by the intensifying conflict, the limited number of border crossings, and damaged roads. In the last two months, WFP has managed to bring in only half of the 24,000 metric tons of food aid required for operations serving 1.1 million people in Gaza. WFP has also had to reduce the contents of food parcels. It also warns that the shell craters and debris is making driving slow and is challenging for truck drivers, even in dry weather. Uh, and in two months, it's feared that when the rains return, flooding is expected, most roads will become unusable. WFP says aid workers grapple daily with slow authorization and frequent refusals when asked for permission to move on. Looting and public order problems are also frequent, especially when convoys wait for hours at holding uh, points. Um, and moving to Lebanon, you will have seen that on Sunday we issued a statement in which the Secretary General um, expressed his deep concern at the exchange of fire that had taken place across the Blue Line. These actions, he said, put both the Lebanese and Israeli populations at risk, as well as threatening uh, regional security and stability. He called for immediate de-escalation. Following yesterday's worrying escalation, peacekeepers in Unifil continue to observe exchange of fire across the Blue Line. As Unifil continues to carry out its mandated activities in these challenging circumstances, uh, the, spe the Special Coordinator for Lebanon, Janine hennis Plashert, and the head of the UN peacekeeping mission in Lebanon, General Aroldo Lazzaro, continue uh, their contacts with the parties 
in an order to uh, de-escalate the situation. Meanwhile, our humanitarian colleagues tell us that the recent uptick in hostilities has not had a significant humanitarian impact. However, the ongoing conflict continues to severely impact civilians on both sides of the blue line. Along with our partners, we continue to scale up re relief efforts in support of the Lebanese government-led response. However, humanitarian response efforts are being undermined by funding constraints and we urgently need additional resources. We call on all parties to follow and to abide by their obligations under international humanitarian law, emphasizing the need to protect uh, civilians, including children and civilian infrastructure at all times. Moving to Sudan, you will have seen that over the weekend, the Secretary General spoke with uh, General Abdel Fattah al-Borham, the President of the Transitional Council of Sudan. The Secretary General and, the, and uh, the General discussed the movements of humanitarian aid through Adre Crossing and agreed to facilitate the movement of humanitarian supplies to enter the country. It was also uh, agreed to put in place a simplified system for the expedited processing and delivery of humanitarian aid. I can tell you that on Sunday, a convoy from the World Food Program's uh, trucks crossed from Chad to Sudan via the Adre border crossing, carrying some 205 metric tons of food assistance. That will be um, for about 17,000 people. That's the second WFP convoy to cross through this crossing. Um, recently, WFP said the food assistance will be delivered to communities across Darfur and distributions will start as soon as the trucks arrive. Additional trucks of WFP food assistance are being loaded in Chad to cross into Darfur as soon as possible. WFP has enough food for half a million people ready to transport to Sudan through the Adre crossing. The Rome-based agency underscores that humanitarian assistance, such as food and nutrition supplies, shelter and health items, must move quickly and at scale through all border crossings and humanitarian corridors into the hands of communities facing catastrophic levels of hunger. Uh, on the other side of Sudan, our humanitarian colleagues tell us that the Arba at Dam, which is about 38 kilometers northwest of Port Sudan on the Red Sea State suffered extensive damage due to heavy rains yesterday. Preliminary reports indicate the breach caused extensive damage in 20 villages downstream from the dam. Our humanitarian partners and local authorities are assessing the affected areas and will have additional clarity on the extent of the damage in the coming days. The Arba Ad Dam is a crucial facility in Port Sudan, serving as a primary source of fresh water for the city. The reported damage is expected to have a substantial impact on water supplies to Port Sudan, worsening the humanitarian situation. And moving to Ukraine, Matthias Schmale, the humanitarian coordinator for Ukraine, condemned the massive attack by Russian armed forces that took place today, which reportedly caused civilian casualties and damage to civilian energy infrastructure in 15 oblasts around the country. That's what the government of Ukraine is telling our colleagues in Ukraine. This comes after intense hostilities over the weekend, which reportedly caused 60 civilian casualties, including journalists in the Donetsk, Kharkiv, and Sumy regions, and resulted in damage and destruction uh, of homes and other civilian infrastructure. Our humanitarian partners report the residents in these regions continue to flee for safety with mandatory evacuations announced in several towns. Humanitarian organizations responded immediately uh, to these attacks across Ukraine, distributing sh emergency uh, supplies. Uh, and I was asked uh, about the attacks in Pakistan, and I can tell you that the Secretary General strongly condemns the attacks that took place on August uh, 26 in Pakistan's Balochistan's province, which reportedly led uh, to the deaths of at least 39 people. The Secretary General stresses that attacks against civilians are unacceptable. He extends his deepest condolences to the families and calls on the government of Pakistan to conduct an investigation and to ensure that those responsible are held to account. And yesterday uh, in Myanmar, we marked uh, the seven years since the forced mass displacement of Rohingya people and other communities from Myanmar's Rakhine state. To mark this sad milestone, you will have seen that we issued a statement in which the Secretary General 
called on all parties to the conflict in Myanmar to end the violence and to ensure the protection of civilians in, in accordance with international human rights standards and international humanitarian law. The Special Envoy for uh, Myanmar, Julie Bishop, is engaging all stakeholders, including regional actors, to move towards an inclusive Myanmar-led process for sustainable peace and national reconciliation that are important steps to create the conditions conducive to the safe, the voluntary, and the dignified and sustainable return of Rohingya people to their homes in Myanmar. And a reminder that about a million Rohingya people are sheltering in Bangladesh and over 130,000 more across the region without any immediate prospect for return. The Secretary General renews his appeal to strengthen the regional protection efforts to provide access to safe affected to conflict affected communities and further support host communities including through the 2024 joint humanitarian response plan for Bangladesh and on a related note <clears throat> in World Food Program says at least that last weekend it began distributing food assistance for families impacted by recent floods in Myanmar's uh, Ayawardi Delta region. WFP noted an estimated 500,000 men, women, and children are living in areas explode, exposed to flooding in that delta. In Ayawardi, initial reports from WFP's partners indicate that hundreds of thousands of acres of farmland have now been inundated. In the hardest hit areas, urgent needs include food, safe drinking water, and sanitation. Over the coming days, WFP plans to assist 35,000 flood-impacted people in evacuation centers with rice and fortified biscuits. This assistance will be coupled with nutrition support for mothers and children uh, to prevent acute malnutrition. In the rest of the country, the agency's food assistance has so far reached 130,000 people impacted by floods in various uh, provinces, and WFP is assessing needs in Rakhine. Um, turning to Afghanistan over the weekend, Rosemary DiCarlo, the Under Secretary General for Political and Peacebuilding Affairs, said that the quote-unquote morality law recently promulgated, promulgated by the de facto authorities further restrict human rights and freedoms, particularly of women. She added that this is unconscionable and if maintained, the law can only impede Afghanistan's return to international fold. Also in a statement, uh, the special representative for the Secretary General for Afghanistan, Rosa Otunbayeva, said the quote-unquote morality law extends the already intolerable restrictions on the rights of Afghan women and girls, even if the sound of a, even, with even the sound of a female voice outside the home apparently deemed a moral violation. Uh, her statement is uh, online. She's expected to brief the Security Council on the 18th of September. Um, and sorry, one more note from Bangladesh, um, which has, uh, su which has um, suffered from flash floods triggered by heavy rainfall and upstream water flows from India. Uh, our team on the ground uh, are providing water and purification tablets, hygiene kits, and food. As we mentioned before, the humanitarian community in Bangladesh launched its first ever humanitarian response plan for cyclone and monsoon floods last month, targeting 1.2 million people for help. to help. To date, some 700,000 people have been reached, with just 20% of the $80 million requested having been received. Uh, before I turn you over to Monica, I will answer questions. Deji, then Edi. Hi, Steph. Evacuation orders in Gaza. Uh, we have counted that in the first three weeks in August, there are about 11 evacuation orders from Israeli military, which means less than two days for one evacuation order. And now Wikipedia even has a page dedicated to Gaza Strip evacuations. It, does the Secretary General think the evacuation orders are what the Israel claimed that a protection of civilians in such a circumstance is now? We've counted 16. Okay. In the first three weeks? In, in, uh, in, August. in August. Okay. okay. Uh, these evacuation orders, I think as you've been told uh, just this morning from various people, um, make our work nearly impossible. Um, 
part of protecting civilians is ensuring that civilians can eat, that people can wash themselves, they have access to medicine, uh, they have access to the most basic needs that human, ne human beings need to survive. Edie. Uh, thank you, Steph. I wonder if you could clarify a senior... I, I'm always very weary of questions that start with, <laughs> I wonder if you could clarify. A, a senior UN yes. official told us that the United Nations couldn't operate in Gaza today because of an evacuation order yesterday right. <clears throat> by the Israeli Defense Forces that forced the closure mm. of the... UN operations office in Deir al-Bala, and yet the two UNRWA officials who briefed us just before you said that UNRWA was continuing to operate today, that uh, they probably, uh, 15,000 Palestinians received health care and other operations were ongoing. Can you please explain this discrepancy? Uh, the UNRWA, I, I, my reading from listening to, to and, and watching our, our, our two amazing UNRWA colleagues, uh, is that UNRWA is, given the way they're embedded with the population, is able to operate in situ with people who are already there. Um, so. That's one thing. What, what our senior UN official was referring to is UN officials and UN humanitarian staff moving about trying to get to places. So again, I think this reflects what we've been saying really since the beginning. It's humanitarian work done on an opportunistic uh, basis. Obviously, if humanitarian workers are embedded with a certain population in a certain area and they have they have the tools to operate and to share uh, and to distribute, uh, they, they will do so, but it is half a drop in a barrel. Uh, Amélie, then Joe, and then Abdelhamid. Thanks. Uh, it's a follow-up to Edie's question, uh, more clarification. Do I understand correctly then that that means that the halt in operation is about transporting, moving uh, to the different places, but where there are some already pre or already uh, uh, aid that it would be delivered anyway? Exactly. I mean, what we're talking about is uh, uh, UNRWA being embedded in, in places. So if, I mean, uh, if they are there and they're able to help, they will help and they will distribute. We are not able to move people from point A to point B. We're not able to go find people. Joe. Uh, thank you. I have two questions, actually. Uh, the first deals with Sudan. Um, y you mentioned that uh, the Secretary General was able to uh, communicate with the head of the transitional government in Sudan. Uh, is it correct to assume that he has still been unable to communicate with the head of the uh, militia? Uh, and related to that question is, uh, the, 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 any lack of communication with militia uh, leadership uh, going to be hindering the ability to deliver humanitarian aid in parts of Sudan uh, that are controlled by the militia? That's the first question. Let, let's face it. What's hindering the delivery of humanitarian aid in, in, in Sudan is the fact that uh, both parties are continuing to fight, right? and indiscriminately without much regard for the lives of their own people. Uh, the Secretary General has not had any recent contact with the head of the Rapid Support Force, uh, but others, uh, others uh, both on the humanitarian and the political end, remain in contact with the Rapid Support Force. Okay, because you did mention uh, in, your, in your opening remarks that the transitional government leadership um, well, it appeared to be at least more cooperative in terms of discussing specifics for access well, I, I to different parts I just reported, I'm not doing compare and contrast, I'm just reporting on the conversations okay. that were had, and, and we've seen some results of some more trucks coming in. All right, and my second question uh, has to do with the Houthi attack uh, in recent days on the oil tanker. Uh, 
and the question of whether there is a potentially very significant risk of oil spillage and environmental hazards. Has the UN been able to or will it plan to assess the degree of environmental uh, hazard as a result of the Houthi attack? We, let me just put it this way. We're not able to go in situ to evaluate the hazard, but one doesn't need to be an environmental expert to understand that a, a oil tanker with 150,000 tons of crude oil, which has lost its engine power, uh, which is anchored in the Red Sea with most of its, if not all of its crew, been evacuated, is a huge environmental risk. Um, to the surrounding uh, area, and we're very worried about it. Um, we're also under, we're worried about the fact that we're now hearing that there possibly a, was some sort of a, a fire aboard that uh, that ship. We strongly condemn uh, the attacks uh, on this uh, on this ship, which uh, endangers the endangers the the ecology, endangers people, endangers thief, seafarers. Um, it's it, it, we've spoken again and again uh, in the last years of the risks of oil spills in this uh, in this area due to the ongoing uh, fighting. There's a Security Council resolution 2722. It must be fully respected, uh, and we particularly call on the Houthis to immediately cease all attacks on commercial ships in the Red Sea. Uh, did I say Abdel Hamid? Thank you, Stefan. Uh, I think you heard the statement by security, Israeli Security Minister Ben Ghafir. He said that he wants to build a synagogue inside Al-Aqsa Mosque. How come a statement passes on you, an official, especially who are there, like Thor Winsland, without any comment? Look, these kinds of statements are highly... Um, these types of statements uh, are highly counterproductive, to say the least. They risk inflaming a situation uh, which is already bone dry. Um, there is a status quo agreed to the parties uh, for the holy sites in Jerusalem. That must be respected by all, not only by indeed, but also in statements. My second question about the evacuation at Al-Aqsa Hospital. I asked this morning, and I didn't get full details of what happened. If you have, if you can share with us, I don't have any more. Uh, I don't have any more details. We've asked for WHO, and I still don't. I'll try to get you some more details. On Last that. thing, as you know, the school year is starting. There are 620,000 children in Gaza must go back to school. Could you help us bring a UNESCO official so we can maybe have a question and answer to I it? mean, I, I think uh, the, the people who are best, uh, best able to answer that are, are our UNRWA colleagues because they run, uh, they run a huge school network. Um, again, it's, it's, it's not difficult to imagine the damage done to a child who not only is not able to go to school, but is not able to go to school in a war zone, right? And has to worry about it, their own safety, the safety of their families, and of seeing their loved ones uh, and their friends uh, killed, and have no ac and don't have access to enough. Uh, uh, the UNESCO, uh, they they are silent. No, no, I, I don't they think don't they are. I don't think they are silent. But what I'm saying, we can, you can ping UNESCO. I'm saying it's uh, it's unwise dealing for the UN side with the schooling in in Gaza. Yes, sir. Thank you. This is Lab Luan, sir. I have three on Bangladesh situation. All over Bangladesh in the last one and a half week, after the interim government resumed the power, there were, has been filed more than thousands of cases, murder cases, corruption cases. Sorry, I, do, what, I don't understand the question. After resuming the yeah. interim government yeah. headed by Dr. Muhammad yeah. Yunus, there were has been filed more than thousands of murder cases and corruption yeah. cases yeah. against about five million Bangladeshi citizens, including them, 
international renowned cricketer Sakib Al Hassan, who is visiting I, I, outside of Bangladesh, okay. and also but, the senior what journalist. Is, what, is, what is the question? In this process, and arrest every day thousands of people, in this way, UN has any concert, the authority use of tactics to suppress people of dissident as a violation of Look, human we, rights? We have no, no doubt that um, the interim authorities in, uh, in Bangladesh who are taking over at an extremely challenging time for the country, both politically and on the humanitarian end, mm -hmm. uh, will do whatever they can uh, to ensure that uh, the rule of law and justice is followed. You have another can question. Can I have another? In, it is two weeks, Dr. Mohammed yeah. Yunus took yeah. over the uh, interim government head. Mm -hmm. However, the law and order situation did not improve. The members of the police force have not been able to return to duty comfortably so, I, so I, far. I, I, can't, I, I, can't, you know, I can't give a play-by-play, hour-by-hour of, of what is reaction to what is going on in Bangladesh. I think my answer to your first question applies to the second. Your third. Yeah, it is on the flood situation you already... Yes, and flood, I think I've, I've answered that. Yeah. And is there any plan to send financial and food grants? Well, as, as I said, we, we, the, the UN humanitarian are there. They've already helped 700,000 people out of the 1.2 million that were targeted. Yes, sir, and then ED, and then we'll hand it over to Monica. Yes, go ahead, sorry. Uh, can I have a comment on the, you know, the uh, Secretary General's recent report on uh, laws, uh, lethal, uh, uh, so lethal autonomous weapon system, so which was issued uh, on Friday report? I think I commented uh, uh, extensively on that on Friday. Yeah, that was uh, really okay. Yeah, okay. And uh, the second question is just. Yeah. Uh, for the Lakhine state, uh, while I was in Lakhine, there was many criticism to WFP from the Buddhist side of the people that you know the UN is only supporting you know the Rohingya only. Uh, How the operation is going to the you know the local I, Lakhine I, I people? I can tell you that humanitarian aid, whether it's WFP, whether it's UNICEF, whether it's WHO is distributed to people in need, regardless of their ethnicity, regardless of their uh, religion, or any other criteria. The only criteria that matters is need. Edie, you're in need of an answer. A, a, a follow-up on the ship that was hit by yeah. the Houthis yeah. in the Red Sea. Is the UN or, or is anyone else trying to make arrangements to um, assess the damage and see if the oil can yeah. be offloaded. I will check with our local colleagues. On that note, Monica, all yours.